Greetings! I'm the Vane and welcome back to let yet another Let's Play for my channel. As you can tell by the title screen, this is Deluxe. Looking forward to Let's Playing this because this is a game that I found myself playing quite often in between doing other Let's Plays in my own time and quite frankly I like I don't play many of the Paradox uh, paradox games because they are often seen a bit too complex but for some reason I just got into this one after picking it up as part of a humble bundle recently um, it was about two months ago that I've been playing this I've not got any of the expansions although I am wait, looking forward to the uh, the uh, Synthetic Dawn's expansion which is coming up. So, like Civ 6 and The Sims, I don't have any real limit on when I'm going to do so. Could see a couple of these, or it, well, you might just have the one. Um, we're selected in the Empire. Now, all of the, from what I gather, each of these empires has their own sort of storyline. And their own sort of play style so but or we can create a new a new one which I won't do any of that yet because and we'll play a nice random empire as before I've set it um, because it's, it's not turn based uh, game speed is fairly set you don't get a game speed difficult change so go to the next best thing which is galaxy size now the elliptic I like the elliptical map that's just a flat round of the galaxy center minimum number of empires don't none of them start advanced no fallen empires yet yeah, they're quite um, I like to have reduced worlds because you can only control so many uh, worlds where you have to start messing around with sectors so not having that many worlds is good plus it also means that enemies aren't uh, able to, to put, have as many resources there's low AI aggressiveness normal difficulty which is the lowest although I'm tempted to limit the FTL method because there's currently three methods we have the warp drive which allows you to move between the stars hyperdrive which is quicker but you have you do warps along specific routes and then you have wormhole generators which basically there you, you have a wormhole drop drive to go through wormholes that you create from one star to any other style in the area, you have to go back to the, work, the system with the wormhole generator. And to expand, you literally have to build more wormhole generators and leap from generator to generator. So we'll stick with any for that. Empire placements, advanced neighbors, no end game crises, and of course, Iron Mode is a man. Iron Man Mode is off. So let's play. Let's see what we got. Okay, so we're the Yeon Sac Sacred Commonality. We're a theocratic dictatorship. Its government is a spiritualist di dictatorship ruled by a single individual in a hierarchical power structure supported by an, the official state religion. We, our ethics, we are militarist, but we are fanatic spiritualist, which gives us psionics and temples, but we can't use AI. Uh, our unrest is, un is reduced, but and uh, governing ethics are of a high popularity. But that being honest, we can have four orbital barbarian and we reduce, and we get army damage and fire rate. We like arid planets, not very adaptive though, with 10% habitability, 
We are fairly charismatic. We're agrarian, so we get an increase in food. And army damage and minerals is increased. In the eon since the first primitive eon communities took shape in the dry canyons and me messes of yonders, a civilization has spread and prospered. Many false prophets took it upon themselves to offer spiritual guidance to our people as we evolved through the ages, but the true faith prevailed. The last heathen stronghold were vanquished after several bloody crusades, uniting us under the holy word of a single divine leader. Now, after the discovery of the Hyperlane network, the finest minds of the Yun sacred commonality have finished the development of the first hyperdrives. The stars themselves are finally within our grasp. Blessings upon you, your holiness. I am Veer, a prototype synthetic intelligence. The priesthood has ordained me to act as your faithful servant and advisor, so that I may aid you on our divine path to the stars. You can change the tutorial level at any time in the settings. I will do the full tutorial, I think, because it puts quests. You don't get any reward for the quest, but it does give you sort of structure if you don't really know what you're doing. And to be honest, I find it a fairly good way to advance, and it allows me to show off a lot of the game. An excellent decision. You will have my full support. Good to know. Building a star empire can be a daunting task. To help get things started, I will be providing instructional missions that cover the basic steps necessary to establish ourselves as a successful interstellar power. The first mission is to survey our home system. I have added it as an entry to the situation. To access it, click on the situation of button in the left section of the top bar or press F3. Thank you. So this is our outliner. We've got our world, we've got fleets, and we've got our ships, civilian ships. We can open the government view. The government screen presents us with information regarding our empire and its government. Here we can see our ruler and any related effects. Separate tabs have a detailed overview of our budget and information on the demographics of our nature. Now, we mentioned, let's see, on authority, so as soon as our ruler dies, there's an, there's an election. So, we're stuck with this guy. This guy is architect, which our buildings are 10% cheaper. And we're a space miner, so construction, build cost, mining station cost are reduced. That's not bad. I said we've got militarist and fanatic spiritualist mining guilds, so we produce more minerals. That's going to be good. And we've got police states, so we've got even more, even less unrest. And our agenda is national purity. So we're going more influence, but we have less alien migration. Which is not bad, I guess, especially since we don't know any aliens right now. So, a lot of waffling just as we started up. Let's see what we want to do here. Situation log. The situation log displays a list of all currently available special projects and various other points of interest. New items will likely appear as we begin exploring the galaxy. Thank you. Tutorial. Survey home system. We need to fully explore our own system before venturing out into the galaxy. To do this, select our science ship, either by clicking the ship itself or by selecting the vessel in the outline. Then click on the survey button in the fleet interface and select a non-service planet near your home world. Your science ship will now put a course to survey all planetary bodies within the system. Okay, so this is our science ship. This is our science ship which is used to survey astronomical objects such as planets in a star system. A planet needs to be surveyed in order to make its resources visible. To put it to work, simply right click on the not yet survey planetary body and select survey system. The ship will then travel between all objects in the system and survey them each in turn. Surveying other planets may also have a couple of ones that are habitable 
and one for future colonization. Now, we have a carefree uh, pilot, so researching, uh, researching anomalies is actually quicker for us now. Let's see, we've got Yondeless, we're there, don't have a moon, but, but basically, here we go, survey system. Don't show again. And you can see this is the system we're in. Got these notes up here. They are physics, te physics technology available for research. The technology screen is where we will be directing our research efforts. Technologies are categorized into three different fields, with each field typically having three available research options. We can research technologies without assigning scientists to a relevant field. It will take significantly longer and is generally recommended. So let's see what we've got. Um, Physics researcher well is resilient so they last longer. See physics lab produces more physics. Fusion reactor is a component for our ships which gives us more power than we so we need. And we can increase our energy storage. But we'll go with the solar panel network, I think, which gives us is a module for our space stations that gives us an extra free credits, which is our currency. So we'll go with that one. Let's see, your this is our society had the expertise is new world, which means those researchers can increase by ten percent. So that's good speed. So pretty much we can unlock terraforming and reveals some resources. Because we'll do that one since it'll be but quicker and then we got adaptable for engineering who basically they gain experience 15% faster. So we've got unlock engineering facility that increases our engineering research. Nuclear missiles um, gives us another another weapon and the missile defense module choice. But we will go with power depth scales, which increases our damage and our minimum. So there we go. We're done. We're ready. Now I love listening to the music, so I am going to and to give you some sense. Separate star systems, our scientists have developed the hyperdrive. This device permits travel at speeds far exceeding that of light between systems connected by hyperlanes. Although travel along a hyperlane is extremely fast, a significant drawback of this FTL method is that interstellar travel is restricted along the paths of the galactic hyperlane network. On the other hand, jumping to hyperspace is possible anywhere within a star system. Because that's what these low ends mean. Um, generally, on the outside is where you construct your wormhole, wormhole generator, and you go to the outside of the, of the star system. Outside's gravity well, before you can use warp or wormhole technology. Hyperdrive you can pretty much use anywhere. But will generally, when you land, will bring you on the outside. From so I assume somewhere near where he starts from. Like I said, I love listening to the music, so I will probably play this on normal speed, just to give you some idea of the scale and the scope of the game. And because it makes for a longer series.
Oh yeah, you see the numbers at the top, we have starting from the left, the our energy credits which is cash, minerals which is our building materials, food which affects our growth, influence which we need for various political things, unity which does traditions and then our three science pools which is physics, society and engineering. As an astute observer may already have noticed, habitable planets are divided into a number of surface tiles. Tiles can generate resources, but we will need planetary buildings to get the most out of them. Our homeworld already has a few buildings including our capital, but the time has come to add more. Pops who are not working in resource or stuff in a building on tile are considered to be unemployed. Okay, carrying on our scope under here we have, these are the number of strategic resources we have, we haven't got any right now. Our core welds in the, that we directly control, we control one of three. We have our naval cap which is three of 14. Tutorial, uh, planetary buildings. Each population unit of pop in our empire works a surface tile on a planet. Some tiles possess a small amount of resources by default but planetary buildings are needed to get the most out of our planets and population. Our homeworld already has a small number of buildings but we should construct another. Build a hydroponics farm and mining network, a power plant from a basic science lab in an available tile. To do this click on our homeworld and go into its surface tab then select an empty tile and click on the build button. Select your choice from among the available options and assuming you have enough minerals, construction will begin on the new building. Don't forget to assign a pop to the building when it has been finished. This is our homeworld and the capital of our empire. The planet summary screen which we are currently looking at provides an overview of the planet's important statistics. Among other things we can see the total number of tiles this planet has is 16 here. How many pops are living on it, currently 8, and how much food it produces, which is 4. We can also see the planet if the planet is suffering from unrest, and if there was a assigned governor layoff out here. Currently our governor, Brashnak. Governor Brashnak, we'll find more about him later. And for now we want to go to the surface tab. Here we see a visual representation of this planet's surface, divided into tiles. This tab is only visible on colonies and surveyed worlds that are habitable. Each pop occupies a single tile, which means that there can never be more pops on a planet than there are free tiles. In addition to a pop, a tile can also support a building. To get the most out of a planet, we need to carefully manage our pops, buildings and tiles. This ghost image here shows us where the next tile is being, is being grown. So we'll shift them because we will, minerals is very important to start with. That practically everything you need that, and that limits how much you can build. Sometimes you need energy credits, but as long as it's positive, you generally don't need to worry about getting them anywhere near as much as you do minerals, especially in the early day. Some buildings may cause adjacency effects to other buildings in neighbouring tiles. Let us take this into consideration when constructing new facilities. Okay, as a spiritual we can get a, we can build a temple. Which is worth considering on certain buildings. You know, Planetary unique, but we want to bait. We're going to give you the basic stuff now, which is for us is a mining network. So that's done. 
But what I generally do is let's swap out. I want more minerals to start with. So I will swap out. The research so that population is growing on our research but it slows our research down in exchange we've got we're getting more minerals per turn so that's good for us I think you can see there's a science ship going around the system So yeah, they are, I'm not playing with any expansions. There's currently two out, I believe. There's a story pack called Leviathans, which introduces, I think it's four Mega Empire Leviathan thingies to go alongside the Fallen Empires. And then there's Utopia, which includes a whole host of stuff, including Ascension perks. I haven't picked them up yet. Um, like I said, I'm looking forward to Synthetic Dawn. Probably pick that up. It should probably be about the same time I pick up the other expansions. I mean, I might do one game without the expansions and then add the others in. So we've found something that's Dunlop's Frontier has something that allows us to get more energy credits, that's good. Excellent. Construction has been finished on our new planetary building, and it should now begin producing resources. Don't forget to make certain that the building is staffed by a pop. Okay, so... We look at what we've got. There we go, we're now getting extra free resources rather than the one we had before. That is self-explanatory, that. Surface tiles on habitable planets are sometimes blocked, preventing their use. Clearing a tile blocker takes time and costs minerals and energy credits, but the free space often makes it worthwhile. Many tile blockers require specific technologies before they can be removed, but the ones on our homeworld can be dealt with as soon as we have the credits to spare. So we've got another quest, which is tile blockers. Several of the surface tiles in our homeworld are blocked and cannot be used. 
One of our first priorities should be to clear them out, making the tiles available for pots and buildings. This takes time and, time and costs energy credits, so it will have to be done gradually. To clear a tile block of going to the surface tab of our home world's planet interface, select a block tile and then click on the clear button. The process of clearing a tile will now begin, assuming you can afford it. Note that different tile blockers have different costs and times associated with them, with clearing them. Planetary governors can also have an effect on this. So if we look here, these with the yellow and black hazard lines are tile blockers. Now if we look, let's see, for example, we can clear that, which is the sprawling slums, then we can put building on it. Okay, so if we go back and we see the tile block has done. So what we can do, for example, is build yet another mining network. And we're going to move our growing tile there. Now that means that we're going to have even more minerals, minerals come from it. from this planet but it does mean that we've got an inactive building which is our basic science lab but we're fine for now What's going on with my other left base? Um, I've been, I've currently been elected secretary of the Unite Community Barkingdale and Haven branch, so I'm going to have to see how much of my time that takes up. At the moment, it's quite slow because I'm doing organising for the next meetings. We want to get regular meetings done. But other than that, I should be able to get to the point where I'm actually uh, getting back some quite of some free time to be able to uh, return to those Let's Play. So I'm looking forward to doing that pretty soon. That said, I am going away for nine days at the end of the month, which at the time of recording is. August, so it probably won't be until at least September before anything starts. So, yeah, Ooh, let's see. They 
just gone half past, but we're coming up to, I think we will leave it there actually. Save the game. Yay on sacred commonality. Better be one. As always, this has been Darvain doing Let's Play Stellaris. If you like what you see in here, even if it does seem to be more me than the music at the moment, then be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment. And until the next time. Goodbye.